page 15 waltz actually before I start this waltz thing I want to talk about page 14 I didn't do a separate video on it because it's not really a, a piece with a title and all that but we'll just cover it briefly at the top of page 14 they, they have these numbered one two three four you see them number one is the five finger position and C well in piano we put the keys on any notes we just rest them down on notes notes that are next to keys that are next to each other I use the word key and note interchangeably so I'm not able to see either one they're keys but I call them notes now what they're doing here is the bottom key the bottom note is a C so we're going to make that the th we're going to put our hand here in each hand this, the middle C is here and I'm going to put the right hand here and then I go down an octave here that's what's known as a C position for both hands. Now don't get confused because the hands don't have to be in the same position. I could have this one in a C and this one say in a G position which means the G would be the bottom note or whatever. That's just the way it works. So and that's number one. It's just a five finger position. Big deal, right? Don't lose you too soon. You know? Then for number two, they go through the primary chords, and I would encourage you to learn these. In both hands, the one chord. Now, look at this written music they've got here. Underneath the stabs, you get Roman numerals for the one, four, one, five, seven, one. Above the stabs, you get the chord names. Just two different ways of calling the same chord. So a C chord is a one chord in the key of C. We're in the key of C major. A C chord would be some other number in a different key. We're not worrying about that yet. Just C major. It's a one chord. Then a four chord is an F chord. Well the F chord is actually here, but we can turn these chords over. So I just put the C on the bottom and that's it. I do that because it's closer to the C chord. I don't have to move my hand. I don't want to go from here to here. I just go from here to here, and I'm there. Here to here to there. Oh, okay. That's the four chord. Then the five seven chord is here. I won't get into the details of it. Just remember, try and try and learn these primary chords. Every key has their own primary chords. The 1, the 4, and the 5, 7. Those are the numbers. The numbers are the same in every key. The chords are different. Then for number 3, they give you the C major scale. I don't like using the written music. Some people prefer it. But I found it very helpful to just focus on the keyboard. And if you go do my C major scale video, they're showing you two octaves up and down, which is the intermediate level. If you want to try that, you go right ahead. I think it's better if you just learn one octave up and down first until you know some of the scales and you're comfortable with the thumb and moving over that. And then once you've got that, then you go to the two octave scales. But that's just my opinion. You can start right out with two octaves if you want to. Just follow their fingering very carefully. Don't alter the fingering. The scales all pretty much have a standard fingering. and I'd encourage you to learn those. One hand at a time to start because you got to know the fingering and the notes. Well, the notes are easy enough because they're all the white keys on the piano. No black keys are involved. You go C to C, two octaves up, and just the fingering for each hand. Then once you do that, put the hands together because they're not the same. That, that's a whole new adventure when you put the hands together. Good luck. Then on number four, they do the inversions for the triad. A triad is a three note chord. That's what we did on number two with the primary chords. Well, here we're using the C chord. And we're inverting, we're turning it over. We're putting the C on top, which is here. Put the E on top, it's here. Put the G on top, it's here. Isn't that wonderful? And that's really what inversions are. The idea is you'll see these patterns in music and once you familiarize yourself with them, it makes it easier to read the music because then you're not suddenly reading all these notes. You're taking it as a group. Oh, it's a chord. I know this chord. And you just play it that way.
and that's number four. The number five are the dominant seventh inversions. Well, they didn't do the four chord inversions. You could, no big deal, but the dominant seventh inversion, you see, they're going to force me to explain this. I, I, the five seven. Dominant means five. That's the dominant it's in, in music. Dominant and five are the same thing. Just take my word for it. We'll get into it in more detail later on. But a seventh chord, if I go to, it's a G7 chord. So if I go to a G chord, I add another note. It's a G7 chord. That's the, four notes total. We don't have to use all four notes. If you look at number two above on the G7 chord, you're here. You're not using the D. The D could be included. But, and sometimes in music, they won't use the B. They'll use the D instead of the B. It's the same chord. It's the same 5-7 chord in C major. Or a G7 chord. Uh, dominant 7. Ah. But they show all the notes there. The root, what we call root position. Root position is where the name of the chord is on the bottom key. And all the notes are a note apart, every other note. That's how you identify root position. And root position is important because you need to be in root position to identify the chord. You know, I don't know, because if I just get a chord like that, I don't necessarily know what the chord is, but if I keep inverting it until I get to root position, then I can find the chord. So I put the D on top, and I put the F on top, I say, hey, I'm here. There's root position. It is a G7 chord. And that's what they've got here, G7. And then they turn it over, put the G on top. I put the B on top. Put the D on top. Put the F on top. And we're back to our original. And that's really what inverting it is. That's not exactly what they put in here, but that's the, that's the message. Then at the bottom, they show another way of doing these chords as broken chords. You have a block chord, which is all the notes going down at one time. Well, a broken chord is anything else where they're not going down. In this case, it's simple because you're just taking one note at a time. There's all kinds of patterns, but this is fine here. And they're just doing the inversions this way. Do that to the 5-7 chord, the dominant 7th. You're here. You're here. Party. It's fun. Yay, team. Okay, that's page 14. Introducing you to the key of C major. Welcome to C major. Pieces we're going to be doing, I'm sure, are all going to be in C major for a while. Three, four time, and hopefully you know what the time signature means. A time signature are those numbers, three, four. You're going to count to three, and you're counting quarter notes. Because if you're going to count, you need to know what you're counting. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Those are quarter notes. Really fast quarter notes, but they're quarter notes. Well, they've got eighth notes at the beginning. So now we gotta go we gotta put an and in between each number. So it's one and two and three. And I gotta slow it way down for that. One and two. I can't talk that fast. One and two and three and one and two and and that's the counting. So in the right hand at the beginning of this, on these, you're in C position. Take my word for it, you're in C position. And it's one and two and three and. See, all eighth notes. One and two and three and. Then you have a dotted half note. That gets three counts because a quarter note gets one, a half note gets two, same as two quarter notes, and a dot gets half of the value of the note, which is in this case one. Put those together and you got three. So the half notes two and the dots another one, so that's three counts. Comes in handy in three-four time, because that's what it is. 
And that's really what this is. Then the quarter notes are the other thing. That's the trickiest parts about this in, in the right hand. On the left hand, you're, you don't have any eighth notes. You're starting in the second measure in C position down here. And you play, you see those first three notes there? Put them together. It's a C chord. It's a broken chord. I'm encouraging you to look for these patterns in the music as you see this stuff because it will help you over time you'll get accustomed to it. Oh, it's a C chord. And you, you instantly, like in this case, read that first measure or where the left hand plays. You all know, have to figure out each note. You Oh, I know what that is. And you pretty much got to memorize that part. Huh? We're okay in the left hand until you get to the last measure. Now we have two notes together. These two. I put my hand in the position, that is the middle finger and the little finger are low, because those are the notes, those are the keys, those are the fingers, I'll get there in a minute. Those are the fingers I'm going to use, and I simply just drop the hand down. I collapse the wrist a little bit. The wrist is a shock absorber, I'm going to drop it down. Try and get the notes down at the same time. I'm not real good at that, but you can do it. And that's how. So the measure before it is here. Can you go from the F, right before the last measure, to the chord, and connect them, and still get the notes down at the same time? That's tricky. What I do is I have, the F is down, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift the weight. I'm not using fingers to do this. I, I shift weight, I just, from finger to finger, whatever finger I want. I just transfer the weight to that finger. I use the weight of my hand and arm and so forth to help push it down. I don't just still and use the fingers. Uh, so here, the F, you're playing the F with the index finger, and all I'm going to do is just shift the weight over. And as I do that, these two fingers involved go down, and this finger comes up all at one time. If you practice that, I think you'll find it's not that hard. What you can do to simplify it is just play the C, just transfer the weight from F to C, then transfer the weight from F to E. I'm, I'm exaggerating this motion. The motion is actually a little one because... And then try and do the C to E, e together. Let's see if you can do that. It takes a little practice, but if you can get it, it will help you a lot as we go through this book. So that's the left hand. So let, you put the hands together and they're doing different things, so you have to pay attention to what's going on because here at the beginning it's not bad, it's just right hand. One and two and three and, but then the left hand comes in. One, two, three. Then in the third measure, the hands are doing different stuff. Pay attention to what's going on because yeah. they give you a speed of moderato, which means a moderate speed, and that's somewhere between slow and fast. Yeah. It's a range, and you really need to decide for yourself what that range is, or, or what what is moderato to you. To to some people, it's low. It's slower than fast, but faster than slow. Really, it kind of depends on how you feel and the mood you're in. You know, how much coffee you've had, I don't know. That will be fast to some people. But this one... That will be slow to some people. You see what I'm trying to get at? It's just somewhere in between. So every time we get a tempo, I say, I don't know what it is. You decide. Because that's really it. It's, Moderato to me is like it's a I don't know how fast that is, it's just I feel it that way. That's right now. Later in the day I might feel it at a different speed. Then the dynamics, the only dynamic they're giving is MF, which means mezzo forte, which means medium or moderately loud. I say sorta of loud. It's between sort of soft and loud. Again, we're back to this range and how do you feel and what is it and it's just sort of loud. 
See, they're throwing a lot at you here. I'm not sure how much I should throw at you because I have a wide range of viewers and some viewers are kind of struggling to understand simple things and other viewers are ready to move on. And I don't know where you are. So I'm trying to sort of accommodate all of you, so I'm trying to explain the simple things. So here's a challenge. See the slur lines, the, the curb lines? I want to put those in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up and down between each one. So look at the right hand between the second and third measures. You have the dotted half note going on to the D. I don't want to connect those notes because there's two different slurs where we call them phrases, can be, and we'll call them phrases here. Two different phrases and I want a little bit of silence between them. So it's, I'm going to lift up before I play the D. So I get just a little bit of silence, and it's this is a very small motion. I'm exaggerating for the camera, but it's just a little small motion. So if I do the second, third measures, one, two, three, and then at the end of the first line again, I'm going to lift up before I go on. So I get a little bit of silence, and you do that with each hand. Both hands have the slurs. Usually the left hand doesn't have it. In that case, you just connect the left hand. But here it's in. Like so. Do that. Let's try this really slowly together to check the notes and the rhythms and then we'll see what's going on. I'm just going to play the notes. I'm not going to worry about how loud I am because I want you to hear all the notes and you play with me then when you're correct on that you're sure you are then you can go ahead and do the moderato and the mezzo forte stuff and all that other stuff so I'll give us three counts since it's a three four time let's play this together slowly right hand is both hands are in C position actually one and ready and go and one 